Roadsters are often criticised for being hairdressers' cars, but you don't have to worry about that with the BMW Z4 because it looks sufficiently oh, manly, even with the roof down. See, I don't look like a hairdresser, do I? Maybe a barber. Inside the Z4 is a design work of art, with one of the most distinctive dashboards of any car. And as you'd expect from a BMW, the materials feel suitably premium too. It's easy to get comfy here in the Z4 because, as well as being able to slide the seat and recline it, you can also tilt it, raise it, and even extend the base. Standard equipment is generous right across the range. All cars get four airbags, DSC anti-skid control, USB input for your MP3 player, Bluetooth for your mobile phone, dual zone climate control, leather, and xenon headlamps. Being a roadster, obviously, space is at a premium, but there's still a reasonable amount of practicality here in this cabin. For instance, the side door bins, they're extendable. You've got a secret little storage compartment under there. The glove box, well, that's reasonable. There's a couple of cup holders under there, a ledge here to store your bits and bobs, and this car even has a hatch for your skis. Look, it even has a special sheath to put them in so that the edges don't damage your interior trim. Unfortunately, though, I don't ski, I snowboard, and you wouldn't be able to fit a snowboard through that gap. As well as a six cylinder engine, you can now get the Z4 with two efficient two litre four cylinder turbos. This one is the entry level S Drive 20i, and it can return more than 40 mpg, yet will still do 0 to 60 in under seven seconds. All Z4s come with BMW's drive dynamic control, and that lets you alter the steering weight, the throttle response, and the sensitivity of the traction control at the touch of a button. This particular car also has M Sport suspension, which constantly adjusts depending on the road surface or your driving style, and allows you to choose between a comfort setting or a more sporty one. I think I'll stick with comfort. If you're faced with a long motorway journey, don't worry. With its well-insulated hard topper, the Z4 turns into a surprisingly relaxing motorway cruiser. However, that brings me on to the downsides. And with the lid up, even though there is quite a bit of space between you and the passenger, the cabin somehow feels a little bit claustrophobic and you can't get an optional glass panel to help brighten things up. And then there's the handling, which, I mean, it's good but it's not quite as sharp as you'd imagine a BMW sports car to be. I mean, this car has actually been set up as more of a GT, and as a result, the steering, it's, it's not telepathic in the same way that it is on a Porsche Boxster, or a Mazda MX-5 for that matter. And then there's the boot. It's actually a really good size, so long as you have the roof up. Now that said, it's still not quite as large as on the Mercedes SLK. Though it does still suffer the same problem as the Merc, and that's that if you ever want to take the roof down at any point, you have to make sure you can fit your luggage under this hood. And as these warning signs clearly show, you can't put luggage down the side or on top of it. And of course, once you've got the roof down, you want to get your luggage out, you have to put the roof back up. And that's a problem you don't have with the soft top Audi TT. What's more, the Z4 starting price is quite a bit more than the Audi's and you can't get it with a diesel engine. But does that really matter? After all, if you want a roadster and don't want to look like a hairdresser, get yourself a Z4. It's a man's car. It is.